In another work of pastiche, Quentin Tarantino has channeled his affinity for westerns and his obsession with vengeance into a suspenseful slow burn with eight unseemly characters hiding out from a blizzard. The films that Hateful most resembles are Tarantino's own. It bears similarities to the plot of Reservoir Dogs. You lost your fucking mind. And also feels like a reworking of the pub scene from Inglorious Bastards that ends in predictably maximal carnage. But as is typical with the director, there are many points of reference on display, from Bonanza to Day of the Outlaw to The Thing. A spiritual cousin to The Hateful Eight is Sergio Corbucci's The Great Silence from 1968. This blood-soaked spaghetti western has plenty in common with Hateful, not the least of which is an iconic score by the great Ennio Morricone. Dark, cold, and violent, The Great Silence is, like the left-wing radicals' other work, politically charged and harbors a cynical view of human nature, capitalism, and justice. Set on the brink of the Great Blizzard of 1899 in Utah, characters aren't stuck inside the whole time, like in The Hateful Eight, but The Great Silence is an equally snowed-in take on the genre, where the bitter cold nipping at the door takes on dramatic power, and being inside does not mean you're safe from the dubious intentions of men. <laughs> no. Jean-Louis Trentignon plays a mute gunslinger known as Silence, hired by an old woman to avenge her son, who died at the hands of Loco, a ruthless bounty hunter played by a maniacal Klaus Kinski, a character who, while acting in the name of the law, does so with vicious homicidal thirst. I'm sorry, but it's a bread and butter, understand? Well, I'll take me to town. Lucky I didn't hit this critter in the face, or else they couldn't tell who he is. Also a hired hand, what sets Silence apart morally is that he never draws first, and his trademark? Shooting off his enemy's thumbs. Not as popular as other spaghetti westerns at the time, Corbucci's approach may have rubbed viewers the wrong way, set in heavy snowfall instead of the blazing sun, where the good guys are the bad guys. The shootout scenes are effectively staged, but lack the sense of cool you might find in the work of Sergio Leone. Here, violence is unforgiving and repulsive. If I kill you, I'll be glad you're here. You saw that woman shoot first. Shot in Eastman color rather than Technicolor, it also lacked the grandiosity and scope associated with other spaghetti westerns. But this actually contributes to the film's grittier feel. Makes three thousand. Officially paid. The violence and cynicism bring the great silence close to Tarantino's film with its observations of America's hateful spirit. I'm a sheriff. Lost my horse. Been walking for a mile, about froze. Gotta get to Snow Hill. Some of the overlap is too uncanny to be coincidence. Take for instance these clips from its stagecoach scene, in which the two principal bounty hunters and a sheriff are brought together by fate. Tarantino seems to have lifted this one in homage. Both films look squarely at a nation founded on condoned violence. If you like The Hateful Eight, or even if you don't, you might love Sergio Corbucci's The Great Silence, a unique spaghetti western that stands the test of time as the genre's most incisive film. A subversive indictment of capitalism's ability to foster greed and moral corruption.